Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for you today. And uh, last Thursday it was announced uh, the artifact reworks. So essentially what they're going to do is take uh, some old artifacts that uh, weren't used by many players or didn't have a lot of uh, uh, good purpose really or any purpose whatsoever and enhance them. Uh, to me it was a little bit bad timing because they announced that literally during the middle of a two times artifact week. And the problem was that when it went to test server, none of the artifacts were really working as intended. They had multiple bugs, the new features weren't working, so I mean, we can't test them, we can't provide feedback. It's basically all speculation. Uh, we've had some kind of updates, but these artifacts are not going to be finished because today, as of I'm uploading it, July the 20th of this video, this is the last day of the two times artifact week. It ends tomorrow. So uh, I, want, I wanted to bring something to you guys, at least give you my opinions. Uh, it is going to be largely speculation because a lot of this isn't tested or finalized. So things could change from this video to when they're actually released. Uh, so, But I'm going to try to make an informed decision for you guys to whether or not you should level them. So the artifacts that are being changed are Gem of Horus, uh, Computer's Distributor HUD, Venomous Dispenser, Demon's Fang, Omega Hedron, and Lazarus Pit Water. Uh, all these artifacts are being reworked. So essentially what they mean by rework, I'll link it the the form topic if you want to go there, but essentially what it is is that all these artifacts, their previous abilities stay the same. So everything that these artifacts did before this update are still there. It's just that they've had added effects to try to make them more useful. So uh, take a look at for Gemma Horus. This was a, a prec artifact that was never, it was it was over, really overpowered on test server when it was released. And then they made some changes to how it split uh, AOE damage. And after that, it was never useful. Uh, it was somewhat useful during the two-handed meta because the, the whole concept around Gemma Horus is that you have to have specific uh, hit counters to basically set up uh, for a town strike and then to set up the bleed damage and the 300% increase. So as you can see, you know, um, Three to hit, Town Strike will hit target for base damage and apply bleed damage for 12 seconds. Nine to 17 hit counter uh, will apply hits targets for 200% of base damage. 17 plus will hit the damage over time. Uh, and then if the target is affected by bleed, your nine hit plus counter uh, Town Strike hits for 300% of the base damage. So it all comes down to trying to get within those windows to set up Town Strike, which now the cooldown was reduced uh, to three seconds. So the power cost uh, was reduced um, to 350 down for 400 percent increase the overall damage by about eight percent so really it's still a strong i wouldn't even say strong artifact it's still a, a potentially useful prec artifact but it all comes down to your weapon combos and really uh, this artifact isn't so much for precision damage it's for the weapon meta so right now the weapon meta is just going to be i mean you can include staff if they want for a single target but it's going to be brawling uh shrukram storm for aoe and then it's going to be uh do will flourish shot for a single target that's not going to change i mean the weapon meta is what it is right now uh so it's a little bit difficult especially with brawling shrukram storm aoe to kind of set up this town strike because of the multiple hit counters same thing with flurry shot you have to interrupt your flurry uh which uh could also lead to um changing the relentless precision proc mod on your neck so it's one of those things where it's going to require some testing more so by prec players so and for me, uh, I'm not a prep player. I could still, I'm still going to do some in-depth previews for you. But right now, if you're looking for my honest opinion, I wouldn't level this uh, because prec already have enough artifacts. They're swapping in the the prec, uh, which I'll touch on venomous dispenser next and kind of follow up on that. But so venomous dispenser uh, that changed. Uh, slightly the duration of the cooldown was six seconds or sorry the duration was six seconds it was increased to 10 seconds and then the weapon buff uh, itself was increased where uh, rank 80 was to 10 to 12 so basically up by two percent so every rank went up two percent so instead of 16 percent now it's 18 percent so f to follow up on Gemma Horus right now the prec meta uh, is going to be pretty much set in terms of the artifacts uh, so if we're looking here and then uh, where's uh, Scrap here as well. So prec, art, prec players are going to have Transformation, EOG, and Strat. That's going to be their main three. And essentially any time they use a Supercharge, they're going to swap. Or, I mean, the, all prec players don't have to do this. I'm just saying what the end game meta prec players are going to be doing. So that their initial setup is going to be Transformation, EOG, and Strat. They're going to swap. Anytime they use a Supercharge, they're going to swap and Scrap the Soul Cloak for the, the extra Supercharge and the cooldown reduction. And then go back to Strat's card. And then same thing, they're going to swap in Dead King. If they're doing that for Orbitals, they're going to swap in Philosopher Stone for Supply Drops. But the problem is with uh, and then with Venomous Dispenser, 
you could technically do a swap as well. It's still giving me a swap artifact because it's not strong enough to replace the meta that it already has. So technically then you'd basically, you'd swap strat for Venture Dispenser. Then you basically uh, swap, you don't have to swap to strat. You could swap to scrap before you, because you may, on, if you're going to use new Venom Boost or any kind of supercharger, or if they're going to drop uh, for your maximum buff with either Gemini, you're going to be wanting to use Venomous Dispenser because you have those extra precs. So you don't have to swap in Venomous Dispenser before any kind of supercharge so that uh, you have the max amount of damage or before any new event boost, etc. So either you have this on your loadout or rotation already and then swap to strat, or basically you have strategist card, swap to venom suspenser, proc your weapon buff, then swap to scrap the soul cloak before you use the supercharge. So, I mean, yeah, that's some people may consider the overkill, but I'm saying that's essentially what players are going to be doing because um, venom suspenser itself is not going to be stronger than having transformation cards at Prec TPS. It's certainly not going to be stronger than having either Gemini. And strategist card procs are uh, already scaling way higher for Prec. So Venomous Suspenser, I would say to level it if you're Prec TPS, but only if you're going to swap it. Uh, I mean, technically, you could probably get away with uh, Transformation, Venomous Suspenser, and Strategist, and then swap in Gemini each time. I mean, that's a possibility as well. But essentially, the, in terms of Prec TPS, those are like the, you know, the five you're looking at. So... Personally, I would level Venom Suspenser if you're a Prec TPS because, I mean, it's still a flat buff for 10 seconds. I mean, it doesn't line up exactly because your weapon buff is going to be a 12 second. I mean, the weapon buff yourself is going to, the power is going to be 12 seconds unless you have a, a back mod that lowers the cooldown. And then your weapon buff duration itself lasts for 20 seconds, uh, where the Venom Suspenser is going to last for 10. So it's still, it, it's still a tricky swap, but at the same time, it does, is useful because it, it's just flat, a flat damage increase. That's all it is. So computer's uh, HUD, uh, nothing really changed. The duration of the stack is extended from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. So that just means you have more time to, f to keep your bars fuller and to, to fill your bar. So before, like you filled your might bar and you're in the middle of filling your prec bar. And FYI, uh, pet damage fills your prec bar still. Uh, that was a, that's a tech issue they can't uh, prevent. So, I mean, it just gives you more time uh, to basically have all your three bars filled for the uh, redistributed array. So if you're using HUD before, Yes, but I would same time I, I wouldn't say this change makes it good enough to be used because it's just the artifact itself. Hybrid DPS is just not what it was in the past. I mean, technically, I found it to work with like gadgets prec, um, uh, because you can put your stripper away on stealth. Uh, I found it semi worked with atomic as well, but at the same time, it's just it's only really if you're using hybrid and then hybrid weapons really you're using like hand blast or solar flame uh because you need something like that uh, quickly clips i mean technically you could probably cheese it with prec dam or with pet damage so if you were like say a pet dps you might be able to look into this but at the same time uh same time pet dps already have their kind of loadout set in stone with source shard quizlet um uh, and and either like mercy artifact or, or grim if they're still using that so for demon's fang the, the change, they added the precision count. So before Demon Fang, which is based on your restoration, now it's uh, you hit your primary target for 8.8% of your restoration and 2% of your prec. And then the, the, they increased the power over time restore. But I mean, the power over time return from Demon Fang was always kind of pointless anyway. It's not going to be uh, that beneficial or consequential. Uh, and then um, the new effect they added was that uh, when you're affected by any shield, increase restoration by 10% and pre uh, prec by 6%. So in terms of this artifact, uh, once again, see, I'll do the in-depth testing later, but uh, if this now has much more synergy with Clarion because of uh, Clarion's restoration and prec buff and damage buff as well. So if you're using uh, Clarion before, I mean, you might already have Demon Fang, but if you want to come up more do like a Clarion or, or damage build or, or a, like a battle healer build, then definitely Demon Fang is going to be the artifact you want to uh, get for that because it's... Once again, it's not like a tricky, complicated increase. It's just like a flat increase in, of, of its performance. Omega Hedron gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, once again, this is like a completely, it's always been a useless artifact. But uh, now the change is that when using a super higher, it will grant bonus might and precision based on the current power levels for six seconds. So when you're reading the stats, it's, it's a bit tricky because technically... The way it works now on test is that if, say, your power pool is 90 to 100%, you actually lose 3% might and 1.5% prec. And then if you're between 70 and 90% power, you gain 5% and 2.5%. Uh, it was announced that uh, they're changing this so that it isn't negative values at the top end. Um, so it might be like, you know, between like a 3 and 5% increase. But at the same time, 
the whole synergy of this artifact is basically for like a power heavy rotation that you maintain between certain power limits but same time that's so subjective because i mean you are beginning you can power back from other sources you have uh, power back from the troller so really i mean yeah there's there's certainly high power rotations out there like mental light atomic but is it enough to run omegahedron over like anything else no <laughs> that's i still don't believe so so i mean unless you have like a whole bunch of money extra and you just want to like play around with the gimmicky but i i don't see this properly working in content uh just because there's still like i mean you still have cyborg available to you in terms of that's power reduction there's there's no might rotation that you can specifically stay and always within these ranges because there's everything else going on there's certain there's going to be moments where you're like you know 30 to 40 percent but at the same time uh, like say for mental for example that's only when you clip invisibility because that's a 900 power cost so basically every 12 seconds you'd have that everything else it's, it's going to be hugely fluctuating um the final artifact lazarus pit water this is going to require a separate video altogether uh that i'm going to have to make because it wasn't working before it's 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 uh the effect should be working now but uh what it is is this is probably going to be the most bro i mean this is the most overpowered broken artifact that they've ever released ever so lazarus per water as you knew before was basically just like a self-revive but now they've added this rage of lazarus with when your hp falls below one become unable to be ko'd for 12 seconds if you are not restored back to full health uh, at least once before the effect expires become knocked out and while this effect is active just grease income heals by 50 percent so what this means is that i could uh i could walk in i could i could walk i could be like a rage tank and tank like the five bosses in elite plus and not die <laughs> like obviously the one they're gonna one shot and kill me but then once i was gonna fall below one percent health i cannot be killed for 12 seconds this is at rank 200 there's the different percentage for the different lower ranks but it makes you unkillable you were basically god mode for 12 seconds and and then the what, what it refers to is by decreasing coming heal is by 50 percent that's a little bit more complicated as well because it's it's all heals so basically like your fire if you're a fire tank your fire self heals is reduced by 50 percent if you're rage technically your, your rage heal back mechanic is going to be reduced by 50 percent if you're atomic your self heal uh, combos are going to be reduced by 50 percent he's also making it so your soda like a uh, bottle city soda for example restores 90 percent of max health well now it's not it's going to be 50 percent of that so it's only going to restore 45 so th they're trying to balance it out where it makes you hard to heal but i mean there's purple healing ray there's page of destiny there's there's two multiple healers there's you can still take your soda i mean there's so many different ways you can get healed and all you have to do is be, be able to heal back uh, i think it's within 95 percent of your health within 12 seconds so basically at any point during that time if you get healed back to that 95 percent health you don't die so think of it like now you could use this artifact to avoid any one-shot mechanics you can avoid no death feats who cares you got this artifact you would never rage crash because if you rage crash uh and the rage crash will kill you once again this artifact will save you all you do is get healed back up once within that 12 seconds and you and you'll be fine so it's just I need to show this basically how broken this is in a video, uh, but I mean you can kind of get an idea from the actual description. So these are the new artifacts. In terms, of, like I said before, what I would say to mention, because I mean you do have a choice. Uh, technically, you could put uh, enough XP into this, these artifacts, to the 1.6 mil, but just don't spend your catalyst because worst case scenario, the it's like say for example, Lazarus Pro is completely OP. I would say every player in the entire game should have this artifact if they don't change it because it's completely broken, it's retarded. But uh, sorry for using retarded, but it's just the, the word that I'm thinking of at the moment. But uh, yeah, so everyone ever should have this artifact if they're not going to change it because of how broken it is. But at the same time, if they do change it or make adjustments to it where it's not as good, at least if you didn't spend the catalyst, then you could just uh, fortify this into another artifact during like another double sale or the next double sale. So at least then you're not wasting anything. At least you're taking advantage of it. So if they don't change it, then you can just put catalyst into it and level up. Worst case scenario, if they change it, then you could basically, you, you haven't invested anything besides XP and just uh, fortify that uh, at a future event. But if you want to know what I would level, uh, I would level Venomous Dispenser, I would level Demon Fang, and Lazarus Pet Water. Gem of Horus is still TBD, Computer Distributor HUD just doesn't work in this meta, and a Megahedron isn't enough, <laughs> isn't worth enough to be able to uh, to be worth it, or worthwhile in the actual loadout compared to everything else you're doing. 
the, the damage that you get from if you maintain that specific rotation power amount is not going to be enough compared to what your normal rotation would be. So there's basically it. So you got six artifacts, three that are going to be worth it, should be, and then three the ones that are still kind of on the shelf for TBD or, or basically if you have a bunch of XP and you want to level something for fun, I mean, yeah, you could level one of these three for fun. So once again, I will do a full follow-up video in the future with in-depth breakdowns of all these six artifacts once we know for sure what they're going to look like when they hit live server. But uh, right now, I got this video out just for you guys to know for the uh, double XP event. So any other further questions, put them in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.